गुड इविंग ऑल ऑफ यू लेट स्टार्ट द लेक्चर दिस इज अवर एयरक्राफ्ट स्ट्रक्चर डे वन लेक्चर सो वी हैव सक्सेसफुली कंप्लीटेड अवर एयरक्राफ्ट प्रिपरेशन लेक्चर इन एयरक्राफ्ट स्ट्रक्चर फर्स्ट आई विल टेल यू वॉट एवर गेट सिलेबस इज हाउ आई एम गोइंग टू क्लासीफाई इन माई वे सो इन एयरक्राफ्ट स्ट्रक्चर फर्स्ट आई विल स्टार्ट विथ वेरी बेसिक फिजिक्स because many students are uh, in this classroom uh, they are doing job they are professionals many students they are not from aero background and uh, some students they are from aero background but they are not doing job also but still it's been 2 3 years they have left study so i am going to start with very basic physics immediately after that uh i will jump to strength of material and uh, in our aircraft structure syllabus strength of material has very good impact if you will not be good in strength of material then you will not be able to think properly on aircraft structure actually this aircraft structure we are classifying mainly in strength of material and core of aircraft structure so what is difference between strength of material and core of aircraft structure during lectures i will give you better classification for both currently just basic glimpse you understand uh when we are going to teach we are going to learn strength of material then we will understand all types of all types of stresses all types of strains okay and types of loadings and here like basics basics of stresses all types strains all these things we will learn all types of loading conditions we will learn all types of dosh conditions we will learn where we can develop stresses in the system or we can gain strain in the system and what is the meaning of core core means the real aircraft structure real aircraft structure means uh if i will draw a rough diagram which looks like this okay something like this we know that in our real aircraft structure if i will plot anatomy of the aircraft then we have wing so you put s wings and uh, we have fuse large we know all the parts we have so idea is when you are manufacturing the entire aircraft then what are the structures we are developing like for example we are developing wing for example we are developing fuse large so when you are developing wing then just for example there is something called longeron there is something called longeron so when you are developing wing when you are constructing designing wing so what is the role of longeron why longeron is being used just an example suppose you are creating fuse large okay so in fuse large there is something called lot of components are there to construct fuse large one of the popular component is bulkhead okay suppose there is something called bulkhead so why are we using bulkhead now when i'll be teaching you strength of material then i'll be teaching you all types of stresses all types of strains and all types of formulas to tackle the situation but when i'll be teaching you aircraft structure that time i'll be teaching you components okay components means like in human body we have our anatomy right we have our kidney brain heart lungs in same way in aircraft in aircraft structure all the components are also made up of different type of structures so we will understand that what is the role of a particular structure for example what is the role of longeron in wing and what kind of stresses and strains are being developed in longeron are you getting the idea it means our main objective is see there are two point of views of this particular subject one is university level okay and one is gate so when you will understand one by one one by one so actually aircraft propulsion and aircraft structure these two are very vast subject and if a student will not understand them these two subjects from very basic 
then out of box thought process can never develop what i'm trying to say when i'll be because our intention is to cover gate syllabus so there will be some points where we have to compromise we will not touch we will not go into that detail of university level because our topic is such that we have to jump from one to another okay it's like we are going into a smooth flow for a particular topic but because of limitation we have to stop that topic and then we have to jump to another topic okay so sometimes you may feel that there is some discontinuity okay flow is not maintained in this particular topic because of limitation when you will go through the syllabus you will understand and don't worry i will explain every single thing so what was my main intention about to about this slide main intention is imagine there is a uh, aircraft and this is the wing of the aircraft both side suppose uh, in flight mechanics and aerodynamics i will be explaining that we have lift distribution over the wing it means to lift this aircraft in the air wing is generating lift so that lift will be developed over the wing okay now imagine a situation that you have a rod like this and exactly in the middle you are hanging a very heavy object you are hanging a very very heavy object so what will happen you may get this kind this kind of bent structure right you may get this kind of bent structure so when you understand that what is the physical feel behind the topic then you will go back to your strength of material topic and in strength of material somewhere i will teach you that there is something called bending so in in strength of material i will teach you bending as a topic but in aircraft structure core you will understand what is the application of bending in our aeroplane okay your beam will bend like this okay this is one thing now in strength of material i will teach you different types of supports different types of equilibrium equations different types of beams i am saying here b e m s beams okay <clears throat> but in aircraft structure you will see them physically for example in strength of material i will teach you there is something called cantilever beam very popular right there is something called cantilever beam but in when i will be completing strength of material and when i will jump to aircraft structure there i will show you which part in the aircraft behaves like cantilever beam so uh, i hope you are able to understand what is the difference between strength of material and what is difference between aircraft structure okay so in strength of material you can say that in strength of material we will be understanding uses of all tools all types of tools means uh, bending torsion combination of these people elasticity but in aircraft structure we will be seeing some physical situation and according to our understanding which topic to pick to solve that particular physical situation that we will learn under aircraft structure i hope you got the proper difference between strength of material and aircraft structure now see there is a problem big problem many students actually this is lecture 1 of 2024 batch so i will upload this uh, for uh, uh, advertisement purpose on youtube so here i want to mention uh, many students like uh, they are not enrolled into any coaching center so what they do they study strength of material by using some youtube channels right or by using nptel but now point is how much of strength of material is useful for for aircraft structure that is the challenging part to filter so uh, you have to filter how much of the strength of material you are going to understand from any particular source either nptel or any other uh, coaching center or so mostly what happens Uh, students are watching some playlist they are from mechanical background so in mechanical background uh, what kind of uh, problems they are? just for example see uh, we will not discuss that uh, 
one bar is there circular bar and we have another circular bar they are you can say parallel shaft and they are going under torsion these kind of things we will not discuss okay many many things i will explain on the way so now point is i will not explain that i will not explain that what are the things we don't have to discuss means i will not provide you contrast with respect to mechanical engineering i will directly teach you what is required for aerospace engineering in your strength of material okay so some students they are having glimpse from their college that uh, in our college uh, in strength of material we have learned these these points uh, but many points we will not understand for aircraft structure according to gate syllabus because main motto is we should not do anything with deviation but as your up to your personal interest if you will be asking any doubt i will explain that doubt okay let's start with our basic physics okay i i think i should repeat this so our first unit is going to be physics in physics we are not going to understand electrostatics here we are not going to understand modern physics here i hope you understood that only relevant topics of physics we are going to cover here okay what is the reason just now i have explained beginning second one then we will jump to our strength of material okay after completing special topics of strength of material now again in this strength of material i will also teach certain topics which are not for directly helpful for gate aerospace but they are like a supporting tool and then third point we are going to understand aircraft structure core okay now in aircraft structure it is very very interesting when i'll come to the aircraft structure core and when i will be teaching you strength of material that time that time itself i'll be giving you example that where are we using uh, this particular topic where to use for example in strength of material during some lecture i will be teaching you compression okay and because of this because of this i'll be teaching you uh, compressive stress compressive stress okay and because of this some strain will develop so during this topic i will try to give you physical feel that in aircraft where we are going to use this so in aircraft structure you know in aircraft structure we have some there is something called landing gear okay so what happens when aircraft is standing that time all the load of the aircraft is actually balanced by this portion what we call as landing gear so when aircraft is standing that time we are having compressive stress developed in the landing gear okay but when aircraft is flying okay when aircraft is flying then till certain distance your landing gear is not uh, what to say taken inside for example if aircraft is like this then for certain distance of the flight like uh, even though aircraft has been airborne but your landing gear will not be retracted it will be uh, as it is after certain uh, duration they will take this landing gear inside so when aircraft when landing gear is hanging that time compressive stress will not act that time tensile stress stress will act okay so now here suppose if this landing gear is this kind of cylindrical thing cylindrical rod okay then why uh stress is being developed here why stress is being developed here so th there is one topic in strength of material stress being developed in the member because of its self weight okay so means what when i'll be teaching you strength of material that time itself i'll be giving you some physical relevant examples from the aeroplane or helicopter or other missile and rockets i hope it's clear so like this we are going to cover our aircraft structure and whatever we have completed in aircraft propulsion all those assignments if some students are in pending just solve that also in free time but now from now onwards your full attention should be for only aircraft structure you complete aircraft structure with me be parallel with me many students could not be parallel in aircraft propulsion because they joined late okay so no problem whatever aircraft propulsion you have done you leave that syllabus there itself from now day 1 you be focus on aircraft structure all the assignments and everything is there on google drive so now i will show you uh, google drive
so this is the google drive this is already shared with you with everyone so in this uh, go to second folder gate ae a means Air aerospace engineering then 2023 video lectures are already there you guys are watching them and 2024 video lectures i am adding after class now come to study material in the study material you go to third uh, you can see here 0 1 2 3 third folder aircraft structure now in this at the top you have a uh, concept library handwritten notes these notes will guide you that uh, what like everything is there in the note whatever i'm going to teach here and uh, then you have all types of assignments and solution for example you can see here assignment 1 and then you have solution for that assignment uh, then you have assignment 2 and then solution for assignment 2 and like like that like that so all the things all the folders i have created properly so and all the important books we have so after every class you will come to know when you open the assignment that how much part is relevant like which assignment you have to do i will guide you during class also okay so now come to whiteboard again let's start with our first lecture this is our lecture one and we are starting our basic physics so we will start with the idea of very important property what is distance and what is displacement so your heading is distance and displacement we will spend small time to understand these topics in detail see uh, what is your distance distance is the length of original path or you can say original path length original path length between two points between two points for example suppose here you have point a and you are going to point b and then you are going to point c suppose this is three meter this is four meter so distance distance is nothing but original path length means a to b then plus b to c correct so 3 meter plus 4 meter this is equal to 7 meter i hope if i will carry from this much basic all branch every all types of students will be comfortable now uh, what is displacement so heading as displacement so this is the shortest path length sorry not path length shortest distance between two points shortest distance between two points means if you are bothering about displacement in this case for the above diagram so this is your displacement a to c so this is ac so how will you find out ac you can use pythagoras theorem under root 3 square plus 4 square is equal to 5 this became your displacement so based on that we will solve one small example copy down this Tick on the screen once you are done. Today also many students could not come. I was expecting at least 35 students today. Okay, actually because many students are having mid-sem and end-sem going. Okay, I am changing the page. Take down one very good question. This is point A. This is point B. Length is... 2 meter then here we have 1 meter here we have 1 meter and this is also 1 meter now you guys calculate a b c d you guys calculate <coughs> distance from point a to c and displacement from point A to C. So give me fastest answer in two decimal space. Two decimal. Two decimal. Do it fast. Okay, I must mention here that this path is circular path. This is circular path. I forgot to mention. I hope by default you have taken this is circular path. So your journey is like A to B, then on this circular path, and then reaching to C. I hope you have taken question in same pattern. Okay, almost everyone has given correct answer. Uh, some students, they did a mistake in the beginning. Uh, but later they corrected. Okay, still some students are doing mistake. See, distance is nothing but from here to here it is 2. Means distance is nothing but AB. 
AB plus arc length of BC, right? This BC arc. So AB is nothing but two. BC's arc length is nothing but pi r. Okay. So pi value is 3.14 and r value is one. So 3.14 into one is 3.14. So final answer is 5.14 meter. This became your distance, and your displacement is nothing but a uh, shortest A to B plus B to C. So your A to B is clear to and B to C is again one plus one. So this is four. This was very straight question, but still some students they did mistake. Uh, I can see in this chat some students they are doing some mistake in the beginning, but okay later they corrected. Good one. So take one more problem. Question is like this. Okay. Now here, this circular gap, circular gap. This is zero point one mm. It is circular gap. It is arc. Okay. This is the length of the arc. Arc length. Arc length means this length. I hope it's clear. Now from here. From center, outer radius is R1, and R1 value is 50 mm, and this radius, inside radius, is R2. R2 is equal to 35 mm. Okay, your job is to calculate the complete periphery of this surface. You have to complete periphery of this surface. Periphery of this surface. Okay, periphery means length of the complete arc, like length of the complete outer red color body. Like this, this total you have to add. This, this thing, this thing, total you have to calculate. Do it fast and give answer in two decimal. First and fastest three answer will be appreciated. Do it fast. I got the first answer. Others, uh, I got second answer. Second answer is not matching, but first and third answer is matching. Okay, get some more answers. Again, fourth answer and third answer close, but still they are not matching. Point to point. Now, this answer, Ashwini, your answer is totally different than others. Give try everyone. Can't believe. so many answers we have so many answers okay good try now i should explain this you guys do one thing uh first you find out full length of like uh, circumference of the smaller circle okay so that is nothing but 2 pi r2 this is smaller circle Now, from smaller circle, how much you have to subtract? You have to subtract 0.1 mm, right? 0.1 mm subtracted. Plus, you have to add the outer circle. Outer circle means 2 pi r1. From that also, you have to subtract 0.1 mm, because this gap is already given. You don't have to play with that. Okay, subtract that. Other than that, you have to add. This line also and this line also, correct? Because everything we have to find out, right? Periphery means everything. So, because you know this from here, this total gap, total radius is fifty, and smaller radius is thirty-five. Then gap is fifteen. Okay, so fifteen gap for this one, and plus fifteen gap is for this one. I hope clear. Two red lines are there, na? Okay, so let's remove this. Sorry. Okay, so now when you will solve this, whatever answer is coming, that will be your correct answer. Okay, maybe many students they may have done this part, they may have subtracted, but they may have forget this fifteen plus fifteen two times. Like these kind of mistakes are possible. Okay, so now this. Uh, 2 pi is here also and 2 pi is here also take common 
so 2 pi i2 common and r1 plus r2 I have added and uh, you can see here 15 and 15 will be 30 so and here 0 0.1 0 0.1 minus 0.2 so plus 30 minus 0 0.2 okay so now uh, this r1 plus r2 will give you uh, 50 plus 35 that is 85 so 2 pi into 85 plus this 30 minus 0 0.2 is nothing but 29.8 I hope it's correct so now your job is to solve 2 pi into 85 into 85 plus 29.8 now for this, okay, please reconsider your answers and for this give me the final answer. What is answer coming for this one? This is very very important. Your final decimal two places must match. 563.87 almost students are giving this answer. 563.87, okay. Some students are giving uh, 7160 and 57 also and okay. So 563.87, I think many students are giving this answer, so I am blocking this answer, 563.87. I am not verifying from my end. 563.87. I hope this is verified by others. Please check. I am not verifying from my side. So this was about the basic calculation of distance and displacements. Now I am going to change the topic. Okay. Related to distance and displacement, we have, there is something called position vector position vector actually position vector is the core topic of vector calculus but here I am teaching what is position vector actually uh, in many software applications and in uh, mathematics and in our physical applications as well when you want to uh, I like when you want to look at a particular point for example suppose there is a shaft Okay, 3D shaft I am trying. So suppose at this location, at this location you want to put any hook. Okay, any hook. So we have to explain what is this position. Okay, like in normal, like how do we talk in our normal daily life with friends? We say, nah, okay, go to that shop, then take turn and then uh, there you will find that. Okay, but in mathematics we have to define the precise, precise location. Okay, anyway in diagram I can show you this precise location. But when you are doing any kind of coding or software, then that time you have to show this location. So, we have several coordinate system. You know a few of them, right? Cartesian coordinate system, polar coordinate system, spherical, cylindrical. These four are very popular coordinate system. In different different coordinate system, we have different different styles to locate any point with respect, with respect to frame of reference. Okay? So, suppose this is your point this is my point of interest and i want to locate this point of interest with respect to this point so this point you can say origin okay and sometimes uh, you can also say this as frame of reference so when you will locate this point so now question comes in which in which coordinate we are solving our problem or that problem is more suitable in which coordinate system for example if you are having umbrella okay and you want to solve any mathematical problem for the surface of umbrella okay in this case polar coordinate system will be more comfortable but suppose if you have a plate like this okay and you are interested in this point so in this case Cartesian system will be much better so actually it's uh, because mathematics is there with the help of mathematics you can apply any coordinate system in any kind of geometry but still in which coordinate system what kind of geometry is suitable this you will understand with practice so currently we are not going to practice these things simply for completion purpose there is something called position vector what is the meaning of that okay so position vector is actually a vector quantity so that vector quantity symbol I am giving as vector r. Now this vector r I am going to discuss only in simplest coordinate system uh, x and y. Okay. Now you have to uh, say that this r is nothing but x distance, x distance in i direction 
so x i plus the same point is having y distance in j direction so y distance in j direction so what is the meaning this guy is distance and this guy is direction here this guy is distance and this one is direction i hope this much basic is uh, comfortable you are able to understand okay now currently this expression what i have written this expression you will say as equation of position vector this is the equation of position vector this r is known as position vector for example if i will say my velocity is 20 i meter per second 20 i meter per second means what 20 is the speed and i is giving you idea that with so i was saying this velocity is 20 i so 20 means speed speed means in 1 second you are traveling 20 meter but this i is giving you idea of direction okay so from here you got one more note point that note point is any vector quantity is nothing but it contains its magnitude plus its direction okay now suppose because of this so position vector uh, think over now suppose because of this if i am asking you one example okay that example is a body is under two forces 3 newton and 4 newton what is the resultant force on the object on the body on the body so let me know what is your answer here in the chat box good as i can see students are asking cross question for this question 3 and 4 newton are at which angle sir two forces in same direction it depends on the direction of application of force what direction of force sir direction is not mentioned whether they are acting in same or opposite or the direction sir very good so these are the expected questions by the student when this question i am asking so actually you guys are on right track because you should know that forces means force is a vector quantity if something is vector it must be having magnitude and direction in this question i have only given 3 newton magnitude i have not given the data about in which direction so actually if this question will come in gate exam then it depends students mind mind is in relax mode or you are under pressure or you are having very less time you may do mistake some students in hurry hurry they may put one also one newton also or maybe like from somewhere you know when we are about to do mistake in gate exam we can do mistake from anywhere somewhere some idea will come in mind and will do mistake okay so uh, i hope this point is clear until i am not mentioning the angle we can't solve the numerical i, I will explain this what what i mean i mean this is the body okay this mass is m suppose m mass body and here you have 3 newton and here you have 4 newton this can be one case so in that case final is acting in this direction right that is 1 newton right and suppose in the same question if i change the direction of force this is 3 newton and suppose i am saying this is 4 newton so in this case you will solve this with the help of vector like 3 newton here okay and 4 newton here so resultant where the resultant will go so you you do one thing uh you take this 4 newton arrow oh sorry you take this 4 newton arrow you put here okay and after that you join this like this so this 3 newton and this 4 newton you solve using uh, pythagoras you got 5 newton so it means what like this some 5 newton force will act okay you can also find out how much angle like you can find out this angle or this angle these things i will teach you during basic physics don't worry so i am going to cover these type of logics all as well when i will go to the vector part okay and there can be situation when uh, i am saying that okay this is 3 newton and in same direction i have 4 newton so 7 newton force okay so position vector i was explaining after position vector i will go to the topic speed and velocity 
so you have speed and velocity so first of all what is velocity velocity is nothing but it is speed plus direction if speed and direction both are mentioned then you will say you have idea of velocity okay now see uh, in this we are going to discuss two categories category 1 if you have motion on a straight line on a straight line so in this case direction is already known so you you have bullet point direction is already known and constant direction is already known and constant okay and you should know the next point magnitude can may vary may or may not vary may not vary because magnitude is different thing good example another bullet point example what is the example bike running on straight road suppose this is your bike okay bike on straight road you can clearly see here bike on straight road road is straight so you can uh, place any direction suppose this is my end direction okay end direction you know you will also understand that there are already uh, four uh, uh, coordinate system just now i have named them cartesian polar cylindrical spherical so in every coordinate system you have different different variables to represent direction in cartesian plane you have i j k with these caps okay in same way you have e theta cap you have e r cap you have e z cap these are also well known unit vectors used in different different coordinate systems okay now if suppose you uh, suppose you are solving any problem in that problem already these people are coming other than that there is need to assume one more direction then you can also go for n cap s cap a cap like these can be your own variables to define the direction of particular vector okay okay so if you are having motion motion on a straight line in that case these are the important bullet points but if you have motion on uh, which is not straight line like curve line i am changing the page second category motion is on curve line what does it mean suppose uh suppose a uh, circle on the circle suppose there is a fan fan rotating fan rotating these are the fan blades example of fan okay so this this point this particular point is rotating in this direction and suppose you know in fan regulator we have number right 1 2 3 4 5 so suppose currently fan is set to 3 so fan has some speed that is speed is, is constant that is my point that is speed is constant so speed is constant but direction is changing so on curve line what is uh, definitely sure one thing is definitely sure bullet point direction will always change always change okay because direction is always changing so you have second point magnitude may or may not change may or may not change what does it mean meaning is suppose uh suppose the same example when you are switching on the fan when you will switch on the fan example switch on the fan switch on the fan then then actually what happens from zero speed to set regulator speed regulator speed change will be there correct from zero speed to a set regulator speed you will be having change so that is the example where your speed is changing okay there are several examples okay so now i am changing the page or here itself i can mention velocity is equal to 
सपोज यू आर राइटिंग ट्वेंटी मीटर सॉरी ट्वेंटी आई मीटर पर सेकेंड प्लस टेन जे मीटर पर सेकेंड सो इट मीन्स ट्वेंटी इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग द स्पीड बट इन एक्स डायरेक्शन टेन इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग स्पीड बट इन वाई डायरेक्शन इट मीन्स वॉट दिस मोशन इज हैपनिंग इन प्लेन दिस मोशन इज नाइदर हैपनिंग ऑन एक्स एक्सिस नॉर ऑन वाई एक्सिस रियलिटी इज दिस मोशन इज हैपनिंग इन अ प्लेन ओके सो दीज काइंड ऑफ मोशन यू कैन ऑल्सो से टू डी मोशन बिकॉज टू डायमेंशन आर यूज टू एक्सप्लेन द मोशन करेक्ट सो मोस्टली कर्व लाइन मोशन आर मोस्टली टू डी और इट कैन बी थ्री डी ऑल्सो बिकॉज इन कर्व लाइन वेन यू आर ड्रॉइंग अ कर्व लाइन डेफिनेटली यू नीड अ प्लेन टू ड्रॉ कर्व लाइन ऑन एक्सिस यू कैनॉट ड्रॉ कर्व लाइन करेक्ट बिकॉज एक्सिस इज स्ट्रेट लाइन ऑल डियर एंड चीनी द पेज now what is the meaning of acceleration so we know that our acceleration we used to represent with a very popular symbol for acceleration this is also vector quantity what is acceleration dv by dt rate of change of velocity now here rate of change of velocity so again understand rate of change of velocity now with respect to time also you can mention with respect to time so see here this change of velocity so what is velocity velocity two things are there right in velocity you have speed also and you have direction also it means speed can also change and direction can also change or one can be constant or both can be constant so your acceleration is zero bullet point acceleration is zero if and only if both are constant both speed and direction are constant if any one will change velocity will change acceleration will not be zero mention here if any one will change velocity will change but sorry for inviting but and acceleration will not be zero and acceleration will not be zero okay so here we are clear that uh, now i am going to give you uh, i am going to ask one question i am changing the page or here itself you can mention no i need to change the page i am changing the page take down uh, uniform and non uniform motion what is the meaning of this c if velocity is equal to constant then you will say uniform motion what does it mean acceleration is equal to zero right this is your first bullet point second bullet point if velocity is not constant then acceleration will not be zero then you will say non uniform motion clear okay one very important point force not force resultant force the resultant force will act on the moving body only in non uniform motion non uniform motion bracket acceleration is not zero copy this much see here i am not going through formula because these kind of small small formulas are not useful for us i am going through the concept so that we can refresh our basic concept of physics and we can enter slowly into this strength of material okay and wherever formula will be required don't worry i will fulfill that requirement so let's go ahead um, so this uniform non uniform part over now let's understand what is force so from here some more related work will start this will be more relevant to our uh, strength of material what is force 
so see here like how will you feel that this particular thing is force so force can bracket or may may change the state of inertia of any object what is this what is this suppose is if any object is there this object is kept on a horizontal surface so currently what type of inertia this object is has inertia of rest correct inertia of rest this guy is having inertia of rest but when we apply force so this object may rotate it means what from inertia of rest it may go to inertia of motion so that's why i have used can force can change the state of inertia or if force is not enough strong it means if friction is present there and force is not able to overcome the friction but still force is there in that case inertia of rest will not change into inertia of motion that's why i have used may it may change it may not change not sure so what is force basic idea basic idea okay so this is one bullet point and another bullet point if resultant force is definitely acting then velocity will definitely change third point if force is there acceleration will not be zero copy this uh sorry you must mention resultant force resultant force is there acceleration will not be there let's understand one more definition of force actually uh technical definition is write down rate of change of momentum with respect to time okay this is very very important logic see rate of change of momentum with respect to time if a student is not understanding this part then you will not understand the main cause of force you know uh, in aircraft propulsion i have taught you that in rotor blades we have air foil shape correct in turbine also we have air foil shape so when gases travels through the gap i said directly that time when gases travels through the gap then turbine blade will start rotating okay because that was not needed that time what is the cause of this rotation that's why i did not explain that but now it is important to understand when gases crosses the turbine blade gap between turbine blade why these turbine blades are rotating actually okay so uh, suppose this is the cross section of the blade okay so that cross section uh, i will maintain the 3d so that you can have the you should not lose the physical feel suppose this is the 3d diagram of the blade so when gas will go like this from this side also and from and from that side also okay from here to here like inlet to exit what are you seeing you are seeing that direction is constantly changing because direction is constantly changing because of that your velocity is constantly changing because of that your momentum p p is equal to mass into velocity is constantly changing so what is the force rate of change of momentum your momentum is also constantly changing with time so that's why because of this change the force is acting on the blade that's why if you will change the shape like this that time uh, the blade will rotate in different direction and i hope you are getting means if you are keeping this direction this kind of gap or uh, if you are keeping this kind of gap 
and here also air is passing from this side and from that side and here also it is passing from this side and from this side so in both the cases <clears throat> what is happening you can see continuously continuously things are changing right you can also understand that like how will you judge momentum direction like in which direction it is changing because that then only you can see right now if if i will say that okay in this direction force will act so rotation will be like this or i will say that in this direction force force will act direction will be like this but how what is the proof what is the proof right so for that purpose we are going to understand this logic i'm going back to previous page rate of change of momentum with respect to time so in this what are your understanding in this you are understanding mostly that change of momentum in magnitude wise but direction wise also we have to understand so for that i am changing the page suppose uh, this is the wall these kind of problems you may have solved when you were preparing for iit je or advance or some other competitive exams in your 11 12th class so one ball will come like this okay they will say that ball is coming like this with velocity u right and this ball is leaving like this with another velocity u so what will happen here in this direction also you have ux component suppose suppose this is x direction and this is y direction so in this direction you have uy component of the velocity when the ball is coming back then you have ux component in this direction and you have uy component in this direction okay because you can see uy and uy they are not changing they are not changing and you also consider that with respect to this angle is also symmetric angle is perfectly symmetric like uh, if this angle is theta then this angle is also theta so what i am going to convey here this uy is not helping to change the momentum okay so i hope it's very very clear uy is not changing the momentum because direction and magnitude both are same here also uy is here here also uy is here but ux is playing role but ux is contributing to change in momentum in momentum okay so momentum is changing only in x direction so px change in px momentum direction x direction momentum how will you calculate mass of the ball suppose m okay in which direction earlier it was this direction so i have to write down 1 and 2 first so your p1 direction sorry your p x direction momentum first case first case when ball is hitting the ball okay that time mass into velocity ux and your px momentum second case when ball is going away from the ball that is again minus m ux now point is y minus m ux correct y minus m ux can anyone judge y minus m ux some students are replying but see here actually see why do we consider x is always in the beginning of the problem because once you are saying that this is your x axis what does it mean meaning is if you have any vector property which is in this direction by default you will take that as negative okay and all other properties you will take as positive that can be same property or that can be other property it means what suppose velocity momentum acceleration they are in this direction so take them positive 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 but suppose force or moment or some other properties they are in this direction then in that case take them negative 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 okay that is the idea i have already defined this x axis in this direction it means what this direction i will take as my positive direction so now i have to know that change in momentum correct so change in x direction momentum so that is nothing but uh, always change means always p2 minus p1 okay so minus m u x minus m u x i hope you are clear so we got minus 2 m u x so this much change we are getting in the momentum correct okay now point is your force definition if you check f is equal to rate of change of momentum with respect to time dp by dt okay so dp we have got but dt we don't have 
but dt we don't have so i will consider that i am solving this problem for per second means whatever is happening that is happening in one second i am considering that because right now i don't have sufficient data but but this dp problem is very easy when we talk about air foil shapes means come here because from here to here continuously direction is changing continuously direction is changing so i can easily find out from here to here in how much time flow is crossing correct so that t will be well known for us well known for us so i can easily find out that how much force is being now see here what i'm saying how much force how much force is being uh, imparted i am saying imparted by these flow molecules to the wall i hope it's clear right so i hope so uh, that's why these people are applying force to the wall okay now let's understand what is the direction so direction is uh Uh, i should go to this wall so i have to explain the direction in this wall so i am changing the page see here this is the ball ball was coming like this and ball is leaving like this okay so anyway y component is not playing very important role here so i am not bothering about y component so here in x direction you have this this x direction and then here you have negative x direction this is positive x direction this is negative x direction so when i found my change in momentum i got minus m u x what does it mean if you only focus on this much property this is positive property what does it mean direction is this positive x but because of this ne negative sign we are very clear that change in momentum is in negative direction means in this direction because momentum change is in this direction that's why you can say the ball is bouncing back in this direction that's why the ball is experiencing force in this direction i hope my explanation is clear okay now but what if this ball is not rigid sorry what if this wall is not rigid what if this wall is like a air foil shape what if this wall is like a air foil shape in that case what will happen we have third law newton's third law action reaction force so if you have one force in this direction then automatically you'll be having another force in this direction and this air foil shape will start motion in this direction i hope it's clear very good many students understood this okay you have uh, feel free to ask your doubt about direction here or you can watch this video later to understand again the same picture hmm i am going ahead so when i will be teaching you uh, lift generation technique like how to generate lift this topic i will take in flight mechanics also and in aerodynamics also that time i will be giving you one similar idea of lift generation so now it will be easier for you and i hope you are enjoying the day one lecture of aircraft structure changing the page so force i am summarizing this is dm by dt sorry sorry this is dp by dt okay now this p is momentum momentum don't be confused there are two words one is momentum what i'm saying is p this is another one is moment moment is very popular we are going to use moment throughout our strength of material this is m don't be confused okay momentum is nothing but mass into velocity but moment is something else to find out moment we need a force and we need a dimension of length i will explain this don't worry momentum is clear uh, why momentum is helpful what is the role of momentum in our physical life if you want to break something if you want to break something or if you want to like uh, i hope you understand that is momentum if you want to break something then your momentum should be very very high suppose you have a glass in this glass you want to make a hole so you put a bullet very sharp bullet with very high speed you can make a hole okay you have to increase the momentum how to increase the momentum mass of the bullet is very small but velocity of the bullet is very very high so you can provide very sharp very high momentum and you will get the hole another uh, example suppose you have a wall 
in any construction design you want to break your old wall so then do one thing bring a very heavy object because object object is very very heavy you don't want to make hole here okay that's why you have to bring heavy object so heavy object because mass is already heavy so just by slight velocity you can develop certain amount of enough momentum to break the ball that is the idea of momentum correct now go for moment i am changing the page okay not now first this and this uh, formula i will take ahead f is equal to d p by dt okay so this d p by dt will convert into m a how it is very very easy i will explain this see this dp you can write as p2 minus p1 and this t you can write as how much time we have taken to change the momentum okay copy down this much okay so let's start this i was saying f is equal to dp by dt and we can write this as ma but how so this dp you can write as p2 minus p1 by time taken to change the momentum okay p2 is nothing but mass into velocity so final velocity minus mass into initial velocity divided by time now you take mass common so v minus u by t now you can see we have a basic formula in physics equation of motion first equation of motion v is equal to u plus at from here you can rearrange the formula so a will look like v minus u by t so you replace this guy with a so we got ma okay so this is the basic formula what we used to remember but the origin is from here rate of change of momentum okay so now we understand addition of force it is very very important for us to know all types of addition of forces because force is vector quantity so there are you know some laws parallelogram law or uh, triangle method so uh, all i will introduce here quickly i am changing the page so you just take here triangle law so i am teaching this for force but it is applicable for all types of vectors suppose there is a object this object has mass m and force is acting in this direction that force is f1 and one more force is acting in this direction that force is f2 and i want to calculate what is the final force on the object so what will i do there is a rule to use triangle law what is the rule first you draw f1 force as it is whatever is the magnitude suppose the magnitude is 10 meter sorry 10 newton and here your magnitude is suppose 20 20 newton so and this angle suppose uh, 45 degree draw again here at 20 newton okay now triangle law if you want to apply then you have limitation of that okay and that limitation is always uh, any other vector any other either this one or this one must be at the head of another vector currently you know that in any vector we have two things one is head of the vector one is tail of the vector so i am saying if you want to apply triangle law you should draw this diagram i'm not able to capture that you should draw here okay 20 newton you should draw there why because now you can see tail of this vector and head of this vector now they are together then from this tail you start the vector and here you add the vector it goes like this so length of this whatever is the length that you can calculate that will be your final force so i am not going into further detail about triangle law now i am going to discuss parallelogram law parallelogram law parallelogram is very useful for us what is parallelogram law in parallelogram law you have condition that for the same question for the same example you will draw your first vector that is your f1 is equal to 10 newton and second vector you will not draw from the head second vector you will draw as it is from the tail this is your second vector as it is whatever is given in the question okay now you draw a hypothetical parallelogram here so it's kind of dotted line you can 
see like this parallelogram this line is parallel to this vector this line is parallel to this vector then here you have two junctions sorry here you have a junction of two tails so from there you start your resultant vector and here you join so this became your final vector and this vector what we have achieved in our first uh, method that vector is exactly same as this vector in direction also and in size also i mean if i am saying this vector as ab so this ab will be exactly equal to that ab so that triangle law and parallelogram they are almost similar but some changes are there okay in parallelogram we have a rule okay in parallelogram how will you find out length of this vector i will change the page see here so if the resultant vector i am saying as f resultant so that is nothing but under root f1 square plus f2 square plus 2 f1 f2 cos theta okay so using this you can find out so in our question your f resultant will look like under root 10 square plus 20 square plus 2 into 10 into 20 into cos 45 degree okay so without mistake give me answer in two decimal okay answer in two decimal uh, some students are giving 27.98 and that is correct so 27.98 newton okay now in this answer we don't have direction okay in this we don't have direction so whenever we want to give direction of any vector we must have any reference without having any reference you can't give direction okay uh, if you remember in childhood uh, we used to learn that keep your face uh, in that direction where sun is there right after that you have your hand left and right side you open your hand like this then this will be east something something so actually that time also we were taking reference of sun okay in that way we were saying so here also when you are going to give direction you should have some reference means this was the object mass m so force f1 was there force f2 was there now we have achieved we have got this our fr resultant vector okay so now i have to say the direction so total angle i said as theta was 45 degree so i can take this as reference i can say angle alpha direction is known as angle also okay if you are finding out direction it means you are finding out this thing and you can also give me this angle as beta any two is fine okay how to how to calculate that see if this is f1 okay i hope you understand that this is f2 now take extension of this line like this so now this total angle will be theta i hope you don't have any doubt because of that this length will be f2 cos theta and this will be f2 sin theta so if i give the name as angle a b c d then if i calculate tan alpha then i must write bc by ac it means bc by ab plus bc right so bc is how much f2 sin theta divide by ab means this is your f1 right so f1 and uh, bc means f2 cos theta f2 cos theta clear so you got a formula to calculate tan alpha and you know the trick if you want to calculate tan beta so actually again understand here we are not looking for tan alpha we are only looking for alpha so finally your alpha formula your alpha will be like tan inverse of this much tan inverse of that much okay so don't forget to calculate alpha otherwise you will do mistake so tan beta so there is a trick to remember this formula trick is you are finding tan correct so sin theta by cos theta will be there this format will come in the formula next thing with sin also f2 will come with cos also f2 will come 
why f1 is sitting alone here so trick i am saying because you are finding out direction from f1 that's why f1 is sitting alone here i hope you will not forget this this trick hmm? using this trick if i will develop formula for tan beta not using this concept that trick so you can develop like this tan beta is equal to from f2 you are calculating right so f1 sin theta f f1 cos theta clear you see how fast right copy down this and uh, another just light point if you add alpha plus beta you will always get angle theta it means if you are finding out suppose by mistake alpha but you had to calculate beta nothing to be panic subtract alpha from total angle theta you will be getting your beta no need to apply here again okay now we are going ahead i am giving you a question take down a question forces f and 2f are acting on an object at 30 degree angle from each other then resultant was was f dash then resultant was f dash what will be the new resultant if forces are replaced by each other but angle is same copy down this numerical then i will solve this numerical so now i am giving option also for this question so option you take like this first option f dash second option 2f dash third option f dash by 2 fourth option greater than f dash third or op fifth option less than f dash now out of these options how will you select the option okay so see here to find out your f dash what is your basic procedure you have to apply the formula so formula is under root f1 is square plus f2 is square plus 2 f1 f2 cos theta right what are we doing suppose this is the object and uh, here suppose f1 is acting here suppose f2 is acting okay now you see i am saying angle is 30 degree in next case you replace f1 f2 with each other means in next case you put f2 here and f1 here and this angle 30 degree you don't change so see here for this case you will use this formula and for this case also you will use same formula why these people you will interchange but they are the same right nothing will change f1 is square plus f2 is square or f2 is square plus f1 is square they are going to give same result and here also you write f1 f2 or you write f2 f1 you are going to get the same result so what is the idea in both the cases you are getting the same f dash here also you are getting f dash here also you are getting f dash so your option 1 is correct you are not having change in magnitude magnitude will not change correct magnitude will not change because this question is only about checking the magnitude so we are safe side we are totally safe side but direction of the force will change why direction of the force will change because your f2 force is actually 2f so no doubt direction uh, your resultant force will be closer to f2 like somewhat in this direction closer to f2 side it will not be f1 side because f2 is heavier force bigger force so resultant will be closer to f2 but so uh, if you say this this is your x axis and this is your y axis so with respect to x axis this will be your final answer of the resultant force angle angle but if you are changing f to this side then now you it will be like this so this will be only your angle i hope you understood that in this question angle was not required 
how will you come to know angle is required or not because this question is based on option so in option only magnitude is given so we can say that okay there is no change in magnitude okay because only f1 f2 we are replacing with each other angle we are not changing tick on the screen if you are clear one very important thing see for 2022 for 2023 every year i take different numericals in live classroom program okay so for advantage purpose you go and watch 2023 lectures also it is there in the folder okay 2022 lecture i i have not given access for 2024 batch but it's okay 2023 access you have right 2024 batch so first few classes uh, like are based on the basic physics numericals are different and uh, you have to solve those numericals also any anyway assignment is same for every year so okay i have a doubt i will take that doubt why we took f1 f2 cos theta not sin theta because it is coming from the proof right i have not given proof for this this formula is coming from proof i hope you have this basic very basic actually in your 9th class maybe or in 12th class you know this formula resultant of two vectors is actually p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos theta it is coming by proof okay okay now one additional note pradne are you are you comfortable what what you are asking or not what i am saying f1 f2 cos theta is coming by proof sin will not come in the proof okay now you have additional note here very important note actually this formula is also helpful to crack one aptitude problem what is the problem actually in parallelogram if you know this height as x this length is as x and this length as y so you can calculate this length suppose this is z so this z length you calculate using this formula x square plus y square plus 2xy cos theta theta is this total angle theta but if you have to calculate this shorter one we have two diagonals in the parallelogram right so bigger diagonal is this one and a smaller diagonal is this one green color so just put here minus sign that's all that will become your a smaller diagonal means write down z is smaller this is z bigger means a smaller diagonal or you can say z bar this is z bar so under root x square plus y square only put here minus sign here it will be plus as it is 2xy cos theta copy down now uh, i will explain what is the meaning of torque and moment these two torque and moment moment is different momentum is different keep in mind so torque and moment so torque symbol uh, we use tau or some people use capital t also for torque in propulsion we are using t for temperature and sometimes for thrust also here for torque we are using tau or t for moment you are using capital m clear and in propulsion capital m is used for molar mass right okay let's go ahead see here where is torque and what is the use of torque torque means torque means whenever you have twist then you have torque okay and moment means whenever you have proper rotation proper rotation there you have moment twist is also kind of rotation also but you can understand the difference between twist and rotation twist means it is just a twist okay for example when you have towel you have wet towel okay wet towel so this wet towel how do you squeeze water out of the towel you have this towel what do you do you twist this towel you don't rotate this get the get the feel you twist this towel then water particles comes out here you are not giving rotation proper rotation this is the difference okay and 
another example suppose suppose this is the wall and in this wall any circular bar is there circular bar is there okay now when you will suppose you have a rope here so you know, you have so many times this rope is actually attached this rope is actually so many times and uh, finally suppose at this end it is fixed and finally it is hanging like this suppose this rope is hanging like this so you put a mass here so because of the weight of the mass because weight is acting downward because of the weight of the mass this guy will experience twist okay but because of the weight of the mass but because of the weight of the mass this beam will also turn like this i mean this bar will also bend like this okay so when we are going to study phenomena of this bending that time moment will come into picture and when we are going to discuss twist then torque will come into picture okay okay now let's understand additional thing physical field if you are understanding very good when i will start the chapters properly because it is basic physics going on that's why i am not going into detail in upcoming lectures of strength of material these people will be discussed in detail properly again torque and moment everything will be discussed today i have uh, taken only basic physics so introduction part is going on hmm? now next there is something called couple so like torque we have like force we have i'm going to say couple also i'm not giving any formula here take couple what is couple so couple is something like when two forces of equal magnitude but opposite direction two forces equal magnitude and opposite direction okay what is the use of couple when suppose you have any bottle you have cap and you are going to uh, open this cap how do you open the cap so for that you will use your finger right so suppose your thumb finger is here and your one finger is something something like this okay and you will rotate this so what will you do you will apply one force this side and one force that side so equal and opposite force you are applying equal and opposite force if you will see the top view of this then you will see a perfect circle like this one force is acting in this direction and exactly opposite force is acting in this direction this is the top view of the cap right so with respect to center this guy is also giving you like with respect to center at particular distance suppose r distance and from here also r distance from the center r means radius okay so uh, to calculate the torque formula we have two ways one is vector form one is scalar form so how do we calculate torque tau not couple i am talking torque torque tau how do we calculate so we use r cross f okay which r the same r what i am showing you here and this is your f and sometimes there are some physical phenomena where torque formula and moment formula will look exactly same okay exactly same but but physical feel will be different physical feel will be different so moment formula also for time being you write r cross f now in case of moment this r will represent something else but again it will be any dimension but definitely a length it can be uh, length or height or something something when the when the time will come i will elaborate these two quantities again in detail hmm. so we have understood till moment let's understand what is difference between force and torque i'll change the page difference between force and torque see the idea suppose this is the rod and this is the center of mass of the rod 
you are applying force here then what will happen this entire rod will move in this direction correct but the same rod same rod center of mass but you apply force here then what will happen this rod will not move in front direction no no what will happen this will actually revolve like this with respect to center of mass so if this force is 10 newton and this force is 10 newton did you change the force no i have not changed the force something else i have done i have changed the position means i have given this much r value that's why torque is being developed the torque is r cross f so suppose if this r is 2 meter then here you can see now now this phenomena is coming to picture in this case phenomena is not coming right because you don't have r there so if situation will change then only new properties will introduce in physics so torque is equal to r f sin theta i hope you want, you remember how to open vector products r f sin theta so here sin theta means what angle between these two vectors they are 90 degrees so simply r f sin theta sin 90 sin 90 is 1 so sin 90 sin 90 is 1 so r f is your final answer in case of this right okay now we will go to basic vectors i am changing the page very basic vectors i'll go very basic vector okay mostly i will uh, go for addition so suppose you have any vector f1 is equal to 10i plus 20j and this is newton this is newton so one more vector f2 suppose f2 is minus 5i plus 10j newton and i need to calculate f1 plus f2 first you understand what is the meaning of this meaning is suppose i want to analyze this force on xy plane then it will be easier for us to visualize suppose this force is acting on this object so force f1 force f1 is having two components 10 and 20 so 10 i am showing this is my 10 and this is my 20 so you understood now force f2 is also acting so force f2 is acting minus 5 here so i will write 5 because it is visible that it is in negative direction and not writing minus and 10 more in this direction 10j also extra in this direction 10j also in direction now in this diagram it is very very easy to find out the f resultant f resultant vector f is nothing but f1 vector plus f2 vector right what is that in x direction how much this is minus 5 this is plus 10 so minus 5 plus 10 this is in i direction clear plus in j direction 20 and 10 they both are in j direction clear so how much we got we got plus 5 i plus 30 j newton okay now because we have done this using uh, direction wise addition so it is very properly visible okay clear now if you want to say that this f1 has particular this much magnitude acting on the object how will you say that like if you want to say that 10 newton is acting 15 newton something something is acting so how will you say that so for that we'll go for the magnitude so magnitude of f1 if you calculate it will come as under root 10 square plus 20 square so 10 square plus 20 square and this will be newton so here in this formula we are only writing magnitude f2 how will you calculate again under root minus 5 whole square plus 10 square clear and uh, if you want to find out f resultant then what will you do then you will do of this under root plus 5 square plus 30 square and you know what when you will calculate this quantity suppose this is coming as some x1 when you will calculate this quantity 
it will come as x2 and when you will calculate this this will be definitely sum of x1 plus x2 for sure ok so suppose if this is coming as x you can verify later x will be equal to x1 plus x2 means we are only adding the magnitude then we are getting this answer ok so uh, that's all this much is enough for tonight in next class we will further extend this topic and as I said this week I will take 5 classes so you all can leave good night all of you if you have any doubt stay with me ask your doubts